Let's get started. All right. All right. Let's Everybody's phone on silent? Yeah, mine's on silent. Let's get started. All right, my man, let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Jason Big Six Estrada, oh. 2004 U.S. Olympian, um, you know, retired professional, and business owner. All right. Now, give us a little history lesson on your greatness. Tell us about how you got into boxing. Um, I started boxing um, I was about seven years old. My first fight, I was seven years old, but I was boxing. My, my dad had me boxing in the basement, you no. Know, um, at a young age, you know, as soon as I was able to even walk, he already had said, you know, my son's going to be Olympian, my son's going to be a boxer, and people was laughing at him, but then these things happened. All right, let's talk about being an Olympian, man, because that's one um, one of those experiences that very few could even have an opportunity to do it. Let's talk about your Olympian experience. Um, The whole Olymp- Olympian experience is, is it's, uh, I'm not going to say it's overrated, but it's, it's a little different than what people think, you know. Um, just me, me having the opportunity to, to, to go out there and represent my country is great. But you know, there's a lot of politics that go along with that, and I, I was able to smoothly, you know, transition through those uh, through the politics. All right, and um, even after that, after the Olympic experience, you went you went and became pro. How was that for you? Um, that was that was awesome. That was also challenging. Um. It's things that people don't tell you. You know, other pros, other people who came before you, they don't share these type of things. There's a lot of inside wheeling and dealing. Um, but um, I, I, I had a great career, and who knows? I might, I might make even make a comeback. You know, things uh, if things work out in the next mm-hmm. three or four months, yeah. maybe I'll be coming back. You never know. All right. Now, when you was a fighter, you always went after the top guys, and a lot of people don't even do that anymore. Why did you felt that that was important? Feel, I feel like in order for me to be the best, I have to, you know, always challenge myself. So, like certain people, I might be one of those people who, when, when, when you 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 fight somebody who's not as good as you are, you kind of bring yourself down to that level. And I never want to be one of those guys. You know, um, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, 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 a bit of a prideful yeah. that I always want to. I never want to be one of those guys known. To mm-hmm. fight just just, to just fight. anybody, you know. I always want to know when my boss career is over. Oh, he didn't play no games. He fought anybody. Whoever was there, you know, he fought him. I just I love the challenge anyway. And I like mm-hmm. to fight. A lot of fighters don't know when to walk away. How come you knew when it was time to walk away? Um, I couldn't work as hard as I wanted to. That's mm-hmm. just straight fact, straight up, one hundred percent truth. Um, I always told myself. I talked to my family that the moment I couldn't do. What I was supposed to do, I couldn't work as hard as I used to work. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do it no more. I never want to be a guy to get hurt and uh and, and, mm-hmm. and all this technology. I didn't want to be one of those guys who like somebody's highlight reel, laid mm-hmm. out asleep, you know, knocked mm-hmm. out, never been knocked out, never been knocked down, and, and I didn't want to be one of those people. The technology made me realize that, you know, like you mm-hmm. you don't want to be on somebody's highlight reel the rest of your life. <laughs> That's forever. So I always told myself if I couldn't work hard, you know, I was gonna leave the game alone. That's the truth. They still show those old Mike Tyson firing, fighting Larry Holmes, and Mike Tyson's getting beat up. Yeah, so <laughs> Mike Tyson got a ton. He got tons of. Yeah, he got tons of guys. Some of guys you don't know, but there's guys like that I look up to, like Larry Holmes. You guys see Larry Holmes could get knocked down mm-hmm. twice like that. You know, so yeah. I never want to be one of those guys. All right, now let's talk about life after boxing. Let's talk about this gym, the Big Six Academy. This gym takes on a personality of its owners. How did you do that? Um. It, just it's, it's better than me. It's better than my family. Where you know, we're all we're all practice with all jokesters. We talk a lot of junk in here, and and basically it's the way a gym is supposed to be. More of a family. Nobody's getting bullied in here. You know, I have guys who on the outside came to the gym, and before they came here, they had got beat up and their sneakers taken. Yeah. And slowly but surely, the kid we we mess with him a little bit, make him tough, make him tough, make him tough. Yeah. Now he don't take junk from nobody. And he was looking for the dudes who took his sneakers. They jumped and took his sneakers, you know. He was a heavy, heavy kid. You know, he lost a lot of weight. And, and mm-hmm. he's an actual good, pretty good fighter now. Yeah. So, you know, we just we just try to bring real-life situations into the gym without without sugarcoating and making it soft. Mm-hmm. The, the, the reality of our, uh, our society now is 
mm-hmm. everybody is politically correct. Yeah. I'm not politically correct at all. Yeah, I think that's what's the best part about this gym. The other thing about this gym is that for some reason, like people win fights here and there, but you guys don't breed winners. You breed champions. What about this gym that that others can't even compare to? You guys really breed straight champions out of here. I think it's I think it's more of a a respect thing. You know, um, anybody can tell you they can give you information and tell you what they want to tell you, but if you don't listen, you know, it may, may, maybe it doesn't work for you. I think mm-hmm. pretty much in this gym, people listen to what we have to say. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, we don't like I said, we don't sugarcoat. And here, if, if you if you look like shit. You look like shit. That's the straight up and down. We're gonna tell you. Yeah. The back and say, "Oh, you look good." You know, rub your back. Or, better work next time. Now, nah, then we don't. We don't like second place. Nobody likes second place, and yeah. we don't like it. So we try to push everybody to that that limit and maybe a little bit more. Yeah. All right. You also personal train fighters now. It was part of your um, post fighting career. How many of the, out of this gym alone you train? Um, I help. I help with a lot of them. I don't. Mm. I don't. You know, you know me. Uh, yeah. Money talks. You know, if, if, if I'm not getting, if I'm not getting paid, then you know I'll still give you my help. That's that's mm-hmm. how I do. But I'm not waking up early in the morning, going running with you. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. But I help, I help almost anybody in the gym. But the main guys that I'm working with now, I do a lot of pad work for. Mm-hmm. The Lamont, Lamont, um, Lamont Powell, Bling Bling, uh, Michael Valentine, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, was Devon Shelton, but he hasn't been in the gym. Um, who's the other one? Um, Timothy Hatfield, but he's an amateur right now. He's he's away for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, Victor Reynoso. Yeah. All right. One time I saw you slap a fighter in the corner who was showboating instead of finishing a man off. How important is discipline to you? Um, discipline is, is is very serious because um, you never know what can happen, and it, it all takes a second. Mm-hmm. Let your guard down for one second and saying you can be the one that's in trouble. You know. Um, mm-hmm. And the fighter I smacked was 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 actually bling bling. Um, you know, he had a guy hurt. And he starts dancing and he, dancing. And he actually twisted his ankle. He twisted his ankle <laughs> doing that. Doing the dance. He, he, he didn't feel it until later on, but he twisted his ankle doing that. Mm-hmm. So when I when he came back to the corner, no, I didn't. I, I didn't put the full stank on it, but mm-hmm. I touched him real nice to wake him up and let him know. Listen, mm-hmm. take this serious. It, mm-hmm. Anything can happen. The guy can swing and throw a, a haymaker or something and hit you in your eye, drop you or Throw an elbow by mistake and, and mm-hmm. cut you open. Now you're, yeah. now you're out for three months. Yeah. That, that three months of revenue lost as far as fighting it. So, you know, I, I just, you got to be disciplined. You never know what can happen. Facts. I'll, now, you also train, like you mentioned earlier, Victor Reynoso. Is he the truth? I think, I think, Vic, I think Victor could be the truth. He could be. He has to stay out of his own head. Mm-hmm. Victor's one of the guys who comes in here and he works hard. But sometimes he works to the point where he's leaving it in the gym. I've seen him drive down for an amateur fight to 152 pounds. Mm-hmm. And he looked good. Yeah. He looked good outside the ring. When he got in the ring, he had no energy left. The yeah. guy the guy beat him up. A guy that went to his level beat him up because mm-hmm. he couldn't throw punches back. Yeah. First night. So he's one of the guys who got to stay out of his own head. Mm-hmm. He gets in his own way sometimes. But as far as hard working... He got this crazy heart. Yeah. And he can fight. You know, he takes a pretty good punch. And and um, if he can just stay out of his own head and just and do what's needed, you don't have to go beyond the box. You don't have to go mm-hmm. extra, extra, because you go extra, extra, you have yeah. nothing left for the fight. Yeah, for the fight, yeah. Now, you also did a few movies. What movies you done? Um, just one. Just yeah. one. Yeah. Um, the Purge. Um, election year, I think it was. That's pretty good. Speaking of that, I just got a check uh, yesterday. <laughs> I, got a, I, got, I, got, I got a little check. You know, it was nice. You know, it's, it's always, it wasn't it was uh, two hundred dollars, but mm-hmm. it's unexpected yeah. money. You know, unexpected money. Baby on the way. Well, mm-hmm. baby here now. Yeah. Um, unexpected money is always good. So I yeah. went to the mailbox. I seen it. <laughs> Cash right back. Quick, so <laughs> that is what that in the bank. Were you looking to pursue more movie, movie roles in the future? Um, I would like to. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do the actual movie part, mm-hmm. but I got extra. I got extra credits for doing the choreography for the movie mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Um, I guess I didn't like the way the fight the fight scene was going. Yeah. So I kind of 
said a couple of things and the director heard me and he's asking, who's this guy, who's this guy? And he started looking me up and then he's like, oh, oh, okay, now he, oh, he knows what he's talking about, it's Frank's guy, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, he let me do a little choreography, so, you know, hopefully that'll be nice. That's a better check for me. I can, I can go in and show somebody how to fight real easy. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's easy work. For real. Now, your son is going beast mode in the gym. Yeah. Is he looking to follow in your footsteps? Because that's some big shoes he has to oh. fill. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to follow. I don't know. It's up to him. He comes in. He works hard. He's improving mm -hmm. like crazy. But he is behind a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I started boxing. I was so little. Mm -hmm. he just, he's just actually starting again at, uh, at 17, 18, 16. 16, 17, he started. Well, he actually started again at 16 because he was boxing at, at 13. Then he got beat up by Kay, by Kaylee Reese. She had oh. the body shot and he was gone for a little while. <laughs> and now he wants he wants to get back. He wants to get back. That damn Kaylee. <laughs> All right. People looking to be a fighter, just a person to train, how can they reach you? Um, you can you can reach me here, um, um Big Six Box Academy. Or, you know, if I can get my cell phone out. Um, is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh four one four nine seven three six eight four, Jason Estrada. Um so that's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Text, don't call me. I don't, if I don't know you, I may not answer that call. You may be a bill collector. <laughs> All right. The last one is the hardest question always. Give your shout outs. Um, I want to shout out Hot Rai for one. That's without, without, without doing this kind of stuff right here, you can't, you can't really uh, can't really keep your face out there. And I want to shout out my dad. For my dad my, my dad is my push. Um, keep me, kept me on the straight and narrow for all these years. You know, my family, I love all my friends, my brothers. Um, no, my, shout out to my babies, you know, Lennox and, and uh, Annalise. Um, Dad loves you. Uh, bad.